Hello and welcome. I hope that you are all doing well. Thank you so much for joining me here today where we are going to talk about my first book for May. And this is the book I chose for the blue spin of the color wheel. That book is The Cloisters by Katie Hayes and it is an adult mystery. Anne wants nothing more than to escape her home life and she has plans to do just that. She arrives in New York City with plans to spend her summer working at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. But when she arrives, she learns that the head of the department that she was going to work with is gone for the summer. As the Director of Human Resources is explaining to her that there's no place for her that summer, Patrick from the Cloisters, a Gothic museum and garden, expresses an interest in having Anne work for him and his assistant Rachel during the summer. Patrick and Rachel specialize in Italian Renaissance art and they, and now Anne, are researching tarot cards, convinced that they were used for telling fortunes way before it's thought that they were used for telling fortunes. Anne grows to love working at the Cloisters and working with Rachel, though she can't help but notice that Patrick and Rachel have a very close and very strange relationship. Anne discovers a set of Italian tarot cards from the 15th century, and she is at the center of a dangerous game. As she and Rachel grow closer in friendship, Others warn her about Rachel and the mysteries in Rachel's past. But Anne, too, has secrets hidden in her past, secrets she wants to keep there. The Cloisters bears some similarities to dark academia, except it's not set in a school, it's in a museum setting. If you like mysteries with toxic friendships and characters that have a mysterious past, you're going to want to check this book out. Because The Cloisters is so similar to Dark Academia books, my suggestions for similar reads are all going to come for this style. So what are some other titles to read for a similar reading experience? I have three for you. We are going to start with the book that's probably one of the top two Dark Academia style books. It's my personal favorite, If We Were Villains by M. L. Rio. Six students are studying and performing the plays of Shakespeare at Delacour Classical Conservatory, a place of ambition and fierce competition. Oliver Marks would like to be the seventh. Ten years later, Oliver is released from jail. Joe, the man who put him there, is waiting for him. Joe wants to know what really happened, and after 10 years in jail, Oliver is finally ready to tell. 10 years ago, secluded in Delacour, the seven played the same roles off stage as they did on stage. Hero, villain, temptress, and ingenue. The play spills over into real life and rivalries are intensified. The actors awake to find a real-life tragedy of their own. One of my favorite quotes from this book is, The thing about Shakespeare is, he's so eloquent. He speaks the unspeakable. He turns grief and triumph and rapture and rage into words, into something we can understand. He renders the whole mystery of humanity comprehensible. If We Were Villains is intense and perfect for mystery fans with a love of Shakespeare. The characters in this book have conversations which are comprised of lines from Shakespeare's plays. It's a story of love and friendship, beautifully written, it'll keep you riveted. In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. It's a mystery thriller. Jessica Miller and her friends, except for Jack, are headed back to Duque University for their 10-year reunion and everyone is going to see the Jessica she wants them to see. Beautiful and confident. They are not going to see 
the Jessica from 10 years ago. The Jessica who left campus after Heather's murder upset everything, including the friendship of the six friends she had been closest to since freshman year. But not everyone wants to move on from Heather's murder. Not everyone can let the Heather's murder go unsolved. Someone is determined to make the guilty party pay. And when they are reunited, they'll be forced to face the secrets each of them once hidden and confront what happened that night. I wasn't sure what to expect when I read this, but it kept me interested and wanting to know what happened. It's so addictive, you won't want to put it down. Our final book is one that I have not yet read, but it's in transit from another branch of the library on its way to me. And I've heard from a few different people that it is an amazing read. And that book is Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. Catherine House is a school hidden in the woods of rural Pennsylvania. Some of the world's best have attended, prize-winning authors, artists, inventors, and Supreme Court justices. For those who are selected, tuition is free, but they must give the house three years removed from the outside world. No family, no friends, no television, no music, everything must be left behind. The school promises its students futures of power and prestige. They can become anything they want. Included in this year's class are Inez, who expects to exchange frivolities for intellectual discipline. What she finds is quite different. The director of the school encourages the students to explore and expand their minds. Catherine House is the nearest thing to a home that Inez has ever known. She becomes friends with her serious roommate, Baby. But when Baby's need for acceptance ends in tragedy, Inez begins to think the school might be hiding something dangerous. Something connected to a secretive group of students selected to study a mysterious curriculum. I'll keep you posted on what I think of this book in the upcoming weeks. And I will be back next week when we will take a look at the book Chaos Theory by Nick Stone. I hope that you will join me then, and until then, I hope that you enjoy all that you do and all that you read. And thank you.